Hello, and welcome to today's Zoo to You. My name is Danya, and I am here with our friend <laughs> Aro, who is a white nosed kawaii. And he has just made his way to the other side, but he'll be back in just a moment. Oh, here he comes through his catwalk. So this is Aro, and he is a white-nosed Kawadi, also known as a Kawada Mundi, or can also be pronounced Cody. He is six years old, and he has been here at the Stone Zoo um, for many years. Um, he was born at the Bo uh, Zoo Boise, and he came to us here at the Stone Zoo when he was about six months old. Ooh, and right now he is getting some uh, crickets. Um, Kawadis can eat lots and lots of different things. They are omnivores, and so they can eat um, they can eat both fruits and veggies and uh, lots of different insects. Which today he's getting some crickets, which they love so much. Um, they are also known to eat some small mammals and lizards, and again, lots of different kinds of invertebrates. Um, they are native to South and Central America, um, and they can live in a variety of different habitats. Um, they can live in tropical rainforests, they can live in mountains, they can live in canyons. Um, they are arboreal, so they like to live in the trees a lot, but they come down to the ground quite often um, to find food. Um, and they, because they live in such a large variety of different habitats, they can also eat a large variety of different kinds of foods. Um, and so they can eat lots of different things in lots of those habitats. Um, their noses are very dexterous and help them to find all that yummy food. So their noses are very, very long and help them to root out um, food underneath the ground and lots of different bugs that they like to eat. And so that nose is incredible at sniffing out food and it is very, very flexible. <laughs> um, they have a tremendous sense of smell, um, and so that is to help them find food and to get around, but also because they just love to smell cool smells. So if he finds something unique and interesting in the wild, it could be any sort of smell from a different animal or even from a human, um, they love to sniff it out and then rub their tails in that smell that they find so interesting. And so when they find something I think is really, really cool and very enriching, they'll rub their tail on it and then bring it back to their band of kawadis. So a group of kawadis is called a band. And they will bring that smell back to all their friends and family to sniff it with them. <laughs> And so their tails are extremely long and that holds a bunch of different smells, but their tails are so long to help them keep their balance in the trees. Um, so they do live up in the trees. Um, they are an arboreal species. And that tail helps them to keep their balance when they're going from tree to tree or when they are sitting in a tree to make sure that they don't fall. Um, in the band um, of kawadis, they are made up of mostly females. Um, males, once they reach sexual maturity, which is about two years, will go off on their own and be solitary or live with a very small group of other males. Um, but the females predominantly stay in that band with their families. Um, and so the bands are... Um, matriarchal and so the females run the band um, with the their other offspring and with the very young males. <laughs> um, Kawadis live for about 7 to 15 years um, and so they are very closely related to raccoons um, and they have a very similar structures um, and they have very similar um, structures on their arms. Kawadis, um, because they can go up and down trees very, very well, they have really muscular forelimbs, and they have heavy wrist rotators and elbow flexors that help them to climb up and down trees very effectively. You'll see a lot of animals climb up trees, but then have to backtrack down. Kawadis and other raccoons and animals in the same family are able to climb up and down trees very, very effectively 
which helps them to move around the forest, to find food, and to find different places to sleep, and to find um, shelters. <laughs> Another adaptation that they have that is similar to raccoons is their nails. They have very, very long nails that help them to dig in the dirt. So although they are very good at being in the trees, those nails do help them dig into the dirt to find other insects and other types of food and roots and veggies. <laughs> and they are also very good at helping them cling onto trees so that they don't fall. So between their nails and their tails, they are really good at staying up in those trees. <laughs> so he is just sniffing all the smells. We like to give our animals here at the Stone Zoo lots of different kinds of enrichment. Kawadis are extremely intelligent and they love to <laughs> interact with new things. So right now he is just smelling some, um, some leaves that haven't been in his uh, exhibit before. <laughs> And so he is just checking it all out. We like to make sure our animals get lots of novel things in order to keep them cognitively healthy. And so these guys love lots of new things intera interact <laughs> within their exhibits. All right, we've had some questions come in. Awesome. Um, so our first question is from Carrie Ann who asked how old Arrow was. Arrow is six years old. He's been here for a, almost six years. He was born at Zoo Boise six years ago, and he um, came to us at about six months old. So he's been here almost his whole life. And Randy asked, are these the same thing I would see in Cancun, Mexico? And just asking for more information on their range area and where they're found out in the wild. Um, so potentially, yes, um, these guys do live in Mexico. They do live um, in lots of different habitats in Central and South America, um, kind of Northern South America and all through Central America. Um, so if you are in Mexico, there is a good chance that you might see some white-nosed coatis. And it looks like Arrow might be losing a little bit of interest in us. That's okay. <laughs> but while we still have him here, Danya, what is your favorite thing about koatis? Ooh, my favorite thing about koatis ha has to be their nose and their amazing fascination with smells. Um, so if you put something, a new smell, like a perfume or a scent um, like cinnamon, they love to stick their nose in it and just go to town. They love, if you hide that smell, they will rip through things and put, get their nose all in that smell. And it's fascinating to see how excited they are. All right, well, thank you so much in joining us for today's Zoo to You on our White Nose Kawadi Aro. Um, and I hope you come to the zoo soon. Bye.